Algebra 2 cram, New York State Algebra 2 regions. But no worries, this is Common Core, so it can be used for review for Algebra 2 in any state throughout the United States or any Algebra 2 course throughout the world. Functions. Question 1. Identify functions. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. If I could stick with well, not stick with, if I could actually stick every single Algebra 2 student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I definitely would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose of Algebra 2 by ordering and purchasing the complete cram session, okay? You have lots of friends, classmates, and probably even some colleagues taking Algebra 2 alongside with you. So spread the word and tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can get a healthy dose of understanding by ordering the complete cram session. Question one, identify functions. Which equation is not a function? Is it a y equals three, b y equals, two, well not y equals, b two x plus y equals nine, C, y equals 3x squared plus 9, or D, y squared is equivalent to 9 plus x squared. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. Well, okay, um, if you purchase or watch the function basic series, you would have known that a function is a relation um, basically where every x value is associated with only one y value. In other words, no two ordered pairs, that's x, y coordinates, can have the same x value unless they have different y values, okay? So let's see. Uh, we can just go through each one by one. Now, at first you might think, okay, this is definitely not a function, but in actuality it is. If you also watch my function basic series, you would have known that you can determine whether or not a function is a function graphically by performing a vertical line test. Let's go ahead and view this visually with a graphing calculator. It's already in the y equals format so you can just input three and then graph and we see that we get a horizontal line. Well a horizontal line definitely pass or will pass the vertical line test because the vertical line states that a vertical line can only intersect the graph of an equation once in order to deem whether or not it's a function and yeah there's only one intersection all along the way. So yeah no two x values. Let's say um, yeah, we don't have x, like, let's say this is like 4, we don't have 4, 3, and 4, negative 3, we just have 4, 3, so all the x values only have one y value. Although it's the same y value, you can have the same y values, but no two y values can have the same x value. I think I'm probably confusing you, but yeah, you'll see how this is possible in a sec as soon as we encounter a non-function. All right, so now we're on to answer choice B. And if you're really astute and familiar with algebra um, 2, although this is not in the y equals format, you would immediately notice that this is the equation of a line, the y equals mx plus b, if you just subtract. 2x from both sides, and so this is definitely going to be a slanted line, okay, and it will pass the vertical line test. So we're going to just input this into our calculator to, to double check graphically that it passed the vertical line test. So again, I said subtract 2x from the left-hand side and do the same on the right-hand side. And this is how you input the equation into the calculator. You input 9 minus 2x. You go ahead and graph it, and you're going to get this slanted line with a negative slope that will pass a vertical line test. 
it's, it's definitely a function, so we can eliminate answer choice A and answer choice B. Now for answer choice C, we have y equals 3x squared plus 9. Well, this is just a transform parabola. We see that the parent function is x squared. And if you watched my function basic series, you would know that adding an amount to a function is going to introduce a vertical shift. This is positive 9 plus 9 in the upwards y direction. And um, multiplying the parent function by a cofactor, a positive one at that, that's greater than 1 is going to introduce a vertical dilation. So this stretches the graph vertically. And so yeah, this is definitely going to be a parabola, which is indeed a function. And let's just check that it will pass the vertical line test. So we input this equation as is. We go ahead and graph it. And then yes, we get a stretched and vertically translated upward parabola. All right, so obviously the incorrect answer choice is going to be answer choice D, but let's think about why. Well, um, choice D has a Y squared term. This means that for any X value, we substitute any input or independent variable we introduce into the equation. We're going to get a quadratic equation for which Y will have two solutions. But just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, let's just use a number as an example. Let's say that we substitute 4 for x. So 4 squared would be 16 plus 9 would equal 25. So if we're, we end up with y squared is equivalent to 25, then we know in order to find y, we would have to take the square root of y and the square root of 25, and the answer would be 5. But wait, that's not it. The square root of 25 or 5 squared is also, negative 5 squared is also a, a solution because negative 5 squared is also equivalent to 25. So whenever we have to uh, um, take the square root of the dependent variable in order to yield our standard y equals format, we also have to consider the hidden negative root. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's just visualize graphically why this is not a function. It will not pass the vertical line test. So as I said before, in order to get the proper format we need for our graphing calculator, we would have to take the square root of y squared on the left-hand side, and whatever we do to the left-hand side, we have to also do to the right-hand side, and we end up with y is equivalent to the square root of 9 plus x squared, but we also include our negative root, okay, because every square has a hidden negative root. Let's go ahead and see how we would input into this into our y um, equals equation editor. So first we're going to input the square root of 9 plus x squared, and then we also have to input the negative square root of 9 plus x squared, okay? But this second part, um, you know, this is just insider knowledge. You would have to be taught this by an instructor. But some people are really genius and they actually figure this out on their own. I know I did not. But let's see what this looks like um, graphically. Here we have a hyperbola, not a parabola, okay? Um, you have the vertices of two separate parabolas. Uh, approaching each other, a concave up and a concave down parabola. And yeah, this is a hyperbola. You can also have this shifted and they can be facing sideways, but that's a whole nother story. That's not a function either. And when we perform the vertical line test, you see that it doesn't pass because one x value has both a positive and a negative y, okay? All right, and we also see where one y value has a positive and a negative x, except for where there's like this horizontal asymptote. Okay, 
So yeah, the correct answer choice is going to basically be answer choice D. And again, the reason why is because each um, x value has two y values associated with it, and it does not pass the vertical line test when we do a visual, in visual inspection.